Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to my get to Amazon EMR video series. Our today's topic is data and metadata migrations. My name is Tanzir Musabi and I'm a specialist SAO at AWS. This particular segment is mainly for analytics leader who are actually handling or managing a large analytics infrastructure. Also infrastructure managers who are actually responsible for managing the infrastructure as well as Hadoop administrator or user who are currently using Hadoop infrastructure on premise or managing entire infrastructure. There are several ways actually you can do data migrations, but what are some best practices and what are the ways you can actually migrate to Amazon EMR where you actually migrate to Amazon EMR with your data? The first one is uh, we highly recommend to use Amazon S3 as your central data repository. And why is that? Because when you use Amazon S3 for your data storage, you can decouple your storage from your compute and data processing layers. That means you can scale up, scale down your storage layer without dependency on the compute layer. Vice versa, you can actually bring up the cluster, it can just scale your compute layer. Then another benefit of have using Amazon S3 for your data storage is you can have your centralized data architecture. That means you have one single source of your truth where you have all your data. And once you have your data in Amazon S3, you can use all our integrated services on AWS which you can use and consume the same data. That means you can still run Hadoop on Amazon EMR and process and transform your data, but you can use other services to consume the same data without moving the data. So the last one is standardized API. You probably have a lot of APIs that you are using today or built it to use, consume, or process your data. Once you have Amazon S3 for storage, you can standardize your APIs because you don't have to implement different APIs for different storage systems. So if you look at the picture here, so you see we have Amazon S3 as a storage and we have AWS Clue Catalog for your data catalog. And on the left side, we have data movement. So you're getting data from different sources. And as you see, all the data sources are actually sending data to Amazon S3. And we're actually storing all our data in Amazon S3. And we're actually running Glue Data Catalog to catalog our data. Once we have that, the benefit is now it, it, it actually opens up a lot of other use cases. For example, you can run machine learning workload using the same data. You can run batch streaming your workload using Kinesis or using Amazon EUR. You can also use interactive query on Amazon Athena. So it actually opens up not only one single use case, but multiple use case because your data is in one single location and which is Amazon S3. So when you actually migrate to data, it depends on the size of your data, how much data you're actually migrating to Amazon EMR. And depending on your volume, we actually have different options and services that you can help you to migrate your workload and data to Amazon EMR. So if you have a data at petabyte scale or if you have a data in at exabyte scales, so we have Amazon AWS Snowball device which can actually help you where you have data at petabyte scale. We also have AWS Snowmobile is 18 wheeler where you actually can use it to move your exabyte scale of your data from your on-premise data to Amazon S3 directly. But if, if you don't have data at that scale, we also have other options that you can use for moving ongoing data to Amazon EMR. For example, we have AWS Direct Connect, which you can configure it for your AWS account and which can give you a higher throughput than a traditional uh, internet uh, copy or speed. Similarly, we have AWS Glue, which you can use to migrate or move your data from your on-prem data to Amazon EMR and Amazon S3. And we also have Amazon S3 from Hadoop. That means you can, we have a utility S3 DCB, which you can use to migrate your data from SDFS to directly to Amazon S3, which actually parallelizes your copy and speed up your data transfer process. On top of that, we also have data sync and storage gateway. The idea is we have different options which you can use to uh, based on your volume and data size, and you can choose which one you, do you want to do a one-time data upload or you want to do an ongoing data transfer. So here's an example, like when you use AWS Glue to move your data. So your data can be uh, stored in HDFS or your data can be stored in, in your database running in your data center or on-premise. So AWS Glue, you can use it to move those data. So AWS Glue has a service called AWS uh, Glue Crawlers which can crawl your data and create catalog in AWS Glue. And then you can use the catalog directly on Amazon EMR. For example, you're running Apache Hive on EMR and you're running a Hive query where data is coming from your on-prem. Similarly, if you have static files or flat files, you can move those data and Glue can also crawl your data in static files and create catalog and then you can consume the data on Amazon EMR. 
So what happens to like a data where your data are in stream or data are event based? So we have AWS Data Migration Service, which you can use to migrate your database to AWS easily and securely. So what it does is, so it actually checks your transaction log and captures the changes directly. So say if you have a database running in your data center, or say you have high meter store running in a database in the data center, and you want to create replications, what you can do is you, you can use AWS Data Migration Service, AWS DMS, to migrate your high meter store running in your data center and migrate all of the cluster and move it to say Amazon RDS. Now let's talk about the data where actually migrating on data where data is in event based or data is in streaming. So we have different options to handle streaming and event based data. So the first one we have is AWS database migration service we call DMS, which you can use. And the benefit of using AWS DMS is it actually reads your transaction log and captures the changes. For example, you can have your hype meter store, which is on continuously changing in your data center, and you can use AWS DMS to capture those changes and replicate in RDS on Amazon. Similarly, it can be also used to migrate your database to AWS easily and securely. So you don't have to write any code, you just need to point out what's your source and what's your target. Another benefit of using AWS DMS is your target can be S3. For example, you just want to capture the change log and you want to run Apache Spark on EMR to to manipulate or transform those uh, Delta data. So what you can do is you can have S3 as a target in your AWS DMS, and then as soon as the file comes in in Amazon S3, you can run a Spark jobs on EMR to handle those changes. The second option is Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose. So it's a managed service for delivering real-time streaming data directly to Amazon S3. In that case, so it's a serverless, so you don't have to do anything. We just configure, you have a data coming in in a similar fashion, so you have an endpoint, you just point it to Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose. It can read the data in a similar way and can write those data back to Amazon S3. The other benefits of using Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose is it actually comes with some transformation mechanism. That means your data coming in JSON or your data coming in CSV, and you want to convert it to Parquet or WRC when you want to store it. So it actually comes with those all like a built-in transformation logic. You can just choose what transformation you want to have when you're storing data to S3. The other option is say, we are talking about here is big data, so your data can be huge. So you want to con compress those data and you also want to uh, like a combine those data. So Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose can compress your data and can actually read multiple sources and put it to a single source. We have more than six different compression strategies that you can use when you actually use Amazon Kinesis Data Firehose and you can just choose what compression you want to have when you're storing data to Amazon S3. So this is an example like when you have multiple clients, they are feeding data in a stream fashions, and you actually all the stream comes to Amazon uh, Kinesis Data Firehose, and Kinesis Data Firehose is continuously feeding or pushing those data to Amazon S3, and you are using Amazon AWS Data uh, Glue Data Catalog, where you are cataloging data. Think about a case like, say, you're getting streaming data, and every day you get, want to create a new partitions. You can do that using Kinesis Data Firehose. It can create a new partition in Amazon S3, and Glue Data Catalog can actually update the partition so that you run Amazon, uh, run a query on Apache Hive on Amazon EMR and can leverage the new partitions. So when you actually migrate uh, your Apache Hive Meta Store to Amazon EMR, you actually have two options. One is using AWS Glue Data Catalog, and the second option is Amazon RDS Database or Amazon Aurora Database to host your uh, Hive Meta Store. The first one, AWS Glue Data Catalog, is a fully managed serverless, highly available data catalog service. So since it's fully managed and serverless, serverless that means you don't have to maintain or ma maintain the replica, you don't have to manage it, the managed scale or tier. So no maintenance, it actually con uh, already creates replications for you. Again, when actually high meta store changes, you generally need to upgrade your schema. Since it's serverless, so you, so you, don't, you are not responsible to upgrading your meta store schema. The second option is, as we discussed, Amazon RDS database or Amazon Aurora database. This is typically you do also in your on-prem. Say you have you have a cluster run, running in on-premise, and you are using external database to store your my high meter store. You can do the same in Amazon EMR, and in that case, you can use RDS for your database, or you can also use Amazon Aurora. The benefit of that approach is you have full control of your high meter store. That means you are responsible. You have full control, but you are also responsible to maintaining it. The benefit is 
You can integrate with other open source applications. For example, if you're using Apache Ranger or Apache Atlas, you can directly integrate those applications directly to Hive Metastore because you are responsible and maintaining the entire Metastore. Since you're maintaining the Metastore, that means it brings up more administration work. For example, you need to maintain replica, you need to handle snapshot, you need to maintain your or come up with your DRHA uh, uh, strategies. So one of the benefits of using AWS Blue Tracker Catalog is you can bring up n number of cluster and point to the same catalog. That means you can have one single data catalog that actually serves as your catalog for entire data set. And then you can have just hype, you're running hype in a different cluster, but another user just wants to run Presto. So you can bring n number of cluster in your system, can point to the same data catalog and can leverage the same Metastore. So it's a huge benefit because you may have different use case and you may want to use a hype Metastore in different ways. But when you actually use Amazon uh, uh, RDS or Amazon uh, Aurora to store your uh, Hype Meta Store, this is the typical architecture you follow because you need to maintain your replications because it's a single point of failure. So what you can do is you can have your RDS running in one availability zone and you can have another availability zone which actually creates the replications. So in that case, if you lose one AZ, you can still, it's not a single point of failure, you can bring up the snapshot from another AZ. So now, we talk about different options, uh, how you can use Hive Metastore on Amazon EMR. So then the question is, how are you gonna migrate it? The most common approach is you do one-time Metastore migrations. So when actually uh, doing one-time Metastore migrations to Amazon EMR, so you have two options. One is existing Hive Metastore to AWS Blue Data Catalog. And we have scripts on AWS Labs, which you can use to migrate your on-prem Hive Metastore directly to AWS Blue Data Catalog. The second option is existing Hive Metastore to Amazon RDS. In this case, you're creating a replication, so you're just copying your entire data that is available in your data center and just directly creating a snapshot out of it and creating an RDS from that. There's another approach we also see sometimes happening, which is ongoing Metastore migrations and sync. That means you have a long-term migration phases and during entire process, you want to run both Metastore. That means you want to keep running your Metastore running on your data center and you also want to run Metastore running on Amazon EMR. So in that case, customer wants to keep the Metastore both in on-premise and AWS. So what you can do is you can create replications so that you're continuously doing a replications at Metastore sync. So you're getting data or updated Metastore from your on-prem um, high Metastore to Amazon EMR Metastore. But when you actually use this approach for a long time, it's hard to maintain uh, making it like a 100% sync. So we, we generally recommend to go for one-time Metastore migrations. So if you look at the pictures, on the top we have on-premise, so we have Hadoop cluster that running and it's actually pointing to a Hive Metastore on, in your on-prem database. And one-time migration, you're actually off offloading the entire Metastore to Amazon EMR and you're using Blue Catalog and RDS. But if you're doing like a continuous migrations or like a migrations in sync, what you generally do is you actually run different replications applications. For example, you can use AWS DMS which can read your database on on-prem and update the database on RDS. In that case, your database or your meta stores are in sync for both in your uh, source and also target, and target is in, in AWS. So that's pretty much it. If you want to know more about data and metadata migrations, please look at the data and metadata migration sections in Amazon EMR migration guide. We also have two-day uh, free migration uh, workshop where you actually go to your site and actually talk about your migration strategies and we actually come up with a uh, proposed architecture. And in that workshop, you can also get a hands-on training on how you actually can migrate to Amazon EMR. To know more about this, you can always uh, go to aws.amazon.com slash EMR slash EMR migrations. Again, this is Tanzir Musabi. Thanks for watching.